Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So, let's talk about Jackie and Finn. Um, so, at first, Finn pretty much jumped down Jackie's throat um, when Jackie, you know, came to the hospital to ask about Sasha's medical records because she wants, you know, she's doing a story on her. And, you know, she wants to really kind of deep dive into, you know, her problems and everything like that. So, a fan is all like, oh, well, why are you asking for a medical record? And, you know, just like really getting in on her. And after Jackie is like, hey, listen, I'm doing a story on Sasha. She told me to come and get these medical records. She gave me her permission. Like, this is what it's for. You would think that fan would be like, oh, well. My bad, um, sorry about that, but no. Somehow this conversation goes into, um, Chase. And, you know, Finn asked her, like, you know, did you ever do a DNA test? And she said, no. And I'm like, well, hold on. This whole, you know, is Chase... My son or my brother. I'm sitting there thinking, so this woman practically lied to her husband when she was, you know, messing around with you. And this is the woman that you're going to sit there and take at face value? Like, she says something, you're just going to take it at face value? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She said that, yeah, no, no, the, the, the dates didn't line up. So, you know, it's, it's fine. You know I mean, that's what she said. The minute he found out that she didn't do a DNA test, he was like, I'm sorry, what? So he get into this whole argument, and I'm not going to lie, Jackie pissed me off. Um, and I understand her reasons and her motives about protecting her son and protecting his fragile state of mind as far as, you know, up and down and left and right and, you know, how... Um, I don't remember her, his dad's name. But, um, you know, she was like, well, you know, his dad is his dad, and you're his brother, and he's happy, and I don't want to upset that balance. And I'm like, well, I felt like in some sort of ways, I get what she's saying, but, like, that's, I don't want to say evil, but just, like, wow. Like, you just, you just have that right, you know, like, like, that couldn't be possibly his son, and he doesn't actually have a right to know if Chase is his son. You know, just the decisions and everything, you just you just got all the control. Like, something about that, that whole, her whole attitude just really irked the living hell out of me. Um, and she walks off, and, you know, Anna, you know, overhears that part. And Finn is like, you know, sorry I had to hear that, but, you know, I need, I need answers. Will you help me? Um, and I feel like Anna will help um, Finn because I, I just feel like she will. Um, I, I'm trying to look at it from both sides, but it's one of those things where it's like, you know, burying your hand, you know, your head in the sand and just pretending everything is okay and just having all those questions, you know, not known. Like, what if Chase actually somehow figures it out years later? He's going to be livid. I mean, he's already going to be livid at his mother, but, like, years later? Ugh. Um. Now... I'm not going to lie. So, in the beginning, Anna was not there talking to um, Jordan. And at first, I was like, what the f... <laughs> I mean, you know, they introduced, oh, you know, she's, you know, she's going to be playing Jordan or whatever. Or she, like, the role of today would be played by so-and-so. And at first, I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> but here's the funny thing. Um... So, when they were talking, and, you know, you were hearing, you know, the woman, you know, um, 
you know, the actress playing Joy, and I was like, um, I know this is going to be kind of bad for some people, but she's actually not that bad. I would sit there and say, if we had to, you know, have a, you know, new Jordan, I'm actually really okay with this version. Now, for the people that don't know, um, and I'm suspecting the real reason why the other actress isn't being Jordan right now is because, well, uh, she contacted, um, COVID-19. Um, I remember her doing a story on, um, Soap, Soap Digest or, like, Instagram or something like that, and pretty much, you know, she, um, yeah, she contracted COVID-19. And since they shoot these episodes, like, weeks or months or however long events, um, I, it totally slipped my mind about that until I saw it, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, they, 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 they seem like they actually have a, a good actress playing her, and, um, I mean, I know I'm not going to get what I want, but, uh, if, if I did, um, we can have her as, as New Jordan. I'm, I'm actually okay with that. The guy who's playing Tiger, I don't know, I, uh, uh, hmm. But her, I'm cool with. Um, but yeah, you know, Anna Smith, they're talking about her marriage, and Jordan is looking, well, blue and, you know, sad or whatever. And finally, Jordan opens up about how her marriage is, um, well, going down the crapper. Um, you know, all the lies and everything that she's told finally caught up with her. And, um, you know, they see Curtis picking up um, dinner or whatever. And Anna's like, listen, you go and talk to him, you know. You may be afraid of being rejected, but, you know, <clears throat> fight for your marriage. Um, Jordan walks up to Curtis, and um, she's like, you know, listen, I want you to come back home. I just want us to talk. No fighting, no argument, no nothing. And Curtis is like, you know, I love mo nothing more than just to be with you, just to be lost in you. But, uh, I don't trust you, so, yeah, no. Um, earlier, earlier, you know, Curtis is at the gym, punching the bag or whatever, and the guy, I guess the guy must have probably been waiting for a while, and Curtis was like, no, nah, I'm good, you know, I'm just give me 10 more minutes or whatever. Um, you know, Porsche's in the gym also. And the guy's like, yo, you said that like 10 minutes ago. Like, now it's another 10 minutes? What, what's going on? Um, and Curtis gets, like, livid. And he pushes the guy. And Portia comes in. She stops the whole thing. I'm like, bro, you, um... <laughs> Listen, I get it. You're you're angry. You're with Jordan and everything like that. But I, I partly I'm sitting there thinking, you know, listen, if you actually had to pick a fight with anyone at any time... I'm not gonna lie, I kind of think this may actually be the best spot to do it since you're in the gym already, you got your gloves on, but, um, yeah, bro, you, you need to, like, talk to somebody. So, Portia talks to, um, Curtis, and I'm not gonna lie, Portia, damn, <laughs> damn, Portia, um, I mean, I've seen her scrubs before, and, you know, whatever, but sometimes when Portia starts talking, depending on who she's talking to, usually she has an attitude, and I'm just like, ugh. But seeing a gem to them, like, damn. Um, she look good. Um, so, you know, Curtis is sitting there talking to Portia, and, you know, he's just like, you know, lie after lie after lie after lie. Like, I just, I can't do it anymore. And then it's weird, because he talks about his PI work, and then he's like, I don't know if I can be a PI, because, you know, I'm always not there, you know, have to uncover, you know, truths, you know, buried under lies, and stuff like that, and they get into this, like, I'm not gonna lie, they get into a conversation that just goes kind of left, and, um, you know, Portia's like, listen, if you, if you wasn't a PI, you had an alternative future, you know, alternate future, whatever, who would be by your side? And Curtis is like, Jordan. 
And I don't know if she if he said something before or after, but um I don't remember what Portia actually said, partly because she was distracting me. But also, I don't know if she said something along the lines of, you know, talk to your wife or work it out or whatever. Um, but as, you know, we saw in that next following scene, he's pretty much done talking. Um, and it's one of those things where I, here's the thing, I know that people are pushing Curtis and Portia together and, you know... Curtis' daughter is really going to be, you know, um, Trina and everything like that. And that's just going to be a dumpster fire in itself. But, um, you know, up until a certain point, I, I didn't really fully grasp where Curtis was coming from. Maybe it's just a hopeless romantic in me that's just like, you know, you guys can work it out. You need to really work it out. But when he does that lie after lie after lie after lie after lie, it's like, and I, I hate, hate to sit there and say this. Um, but, you know, there's such a thing as, you know, love is, you know, sometimes love isn't, isn't enough. Sometimes it's not enough. And, and Curtis and Jordan are the perfect example of that sentence. Um, and I understand where Curtis is coming from. I think Jordan needs to kind of just accept it and just kind of go with it at this point. Um, now, let's talk about uh, Carly. So, yeah, she's in the room and she's whittling around with a necklace and Nicholas is like um the hell are you doing Carly tries her best to sit there and lie oh I was I was mad and I was angry I need to cool off and you know went to Avery's room for some BS excuse that really didn't fly um meanwhile you know you got Bobby Smith they trying to distract um Ava and to Nicholas you know pretty much escorts Carly into the room and Ava's like, so what is going on here? You know, because here's the thing. I feel like Carly underestimates Ava a lot. And Ava was like, listen, so, you know, I'm not buying this whole act of, you know, Bobby trying to be the good person and try to butter me up or whatever and try and distract me while you do whatever the hell it is that you're doing. What is going on? And, you know, Carly tries to come up with some quick scheme, like, oh, well, she was trying to replace the, I was trying to replace the necklace, um, you know, to match it with Donna, so that way they can have a matching set for Sonny. And, I'm not gonna lie, to the average bear, that might have actually worked. I might have been like, oh, wow, you know, that's really, that's really, you know, a matching set, you know, Donna and Ava, I mean, Donna and Avery have matching hearts, that's, that's really sweet, and it's, but, uh, yeah, Nicholas was like, so you, you, you're not buying that, are you? And they was like, nope. So, I don't know what's going on. They get to a point where they're about to call the cops. Um, Carly's like, oh, she starts bringing up Nicholas and Ava's transgressions, you know, or her, their misdeeds or whatever. And finally, Ava's like, yeah, um, I don't know what's going on. You people are giving me a headache. You keep them away from me. You keep me away from my, my drinks. You gotta go. So they kick him out, and then, you know, Nicholas and Ava start talking. And Ava, here's the thing. I understand exactly where Ava's coming from. Ava's like, yo, listen, I'm sick and tired of constantly being, you know, having to beg for extra time just to spend with my daughter. Like, this is ridiculous. And Carly always sniffed there shoving it in her face. I think they're both really sick and tired of the way that Carly goes about it, you know, <clears throat> with the whole Spencer thing, and now Avery, they're done. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie, I was actually pretty sick of that too. Especially given that the fact that I feel like Carly is being a hypocrite in this whole thing, and if the roles were reversed, we all know how Carly is with her kids. So, like, are you kidding me? Um, anyway, they, they, they talk about it, and at first Nicholas was like, so... You don't want to find out anything more about why Carly was so obsessed with that necklace? And he was like, nope. Because she's just celebrating the victory that 
And it shouldn't even be a victory, just a right to actually spend time with her daughter. And she's just happy with that. Meanwhile, um, Carly decides to drop in on um, Jax. Like, like he's, he's not spending time with his girlfriend. Just, hey, I need to talk to you. Yeah, that whole dropping in constantly, all the time, that that's not going to fly. That's not going to fly. She did that with Jason, and it got to a point where Sam finally had an... I have to tell you, too, Jason had enough of that. Um, and I'm just waiting for Jax to have his breaking point, but we know that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. You know, I'm really surprised, just on a side note, about how many people actually don't like Jax. I've been watching the show since 2001. And everyone always talks about, I love Jax and everything like that. I never actually found so many people that didn't like Jax until I looked in the comment section. I was like, oh, wow. Um, but anyway. Okay. Um, well, earlier, Jackson and Nina were sitting there talking. Nothing really too particular, except for the fact that Jax was like, oh, well, next time Carly calls, you know... I'll decide if it's a true emergency or not, so this way I don't just bail on you every five minutes every time that she calls. Which we both know is not going to happen. Um, and then they, you know, they, um, you know, they get into a sex scene. And I'm not going to lie, I partly laughed. And I didn't laugh because I felt like the scene was silly. I laughed because they don't really do these sex scenes anymore. Um... I remember watching Bowen the Beautiful. And the first episode I watched, I when I sit there and say I laugh my ass off, and this this whatever that they were doing, kissing a doll or something, I mean this was just hilarious. So actually seeing them go back to doing their versions of of of, of mattress tag, it 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 made me laugh, but not in a way like it's stupid. It was just like, wow, I haven't seen one of these in... Actually, to tell you the truth, I don't remember the last time I've actually seen a sex scene in, in um, GH. I think it was a couple of years ago. Write down in the comment section below when was the last time you've seen one of those scenes because I've been, it, there was a time when I sat there and used to watch this and they used to show it like Every other week, maybe once a month. And it was just something that I was just used to. Because I was used to fast forward the past it because it was just silly to watch. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, but with that being said, yeah. Write down in the comment section below because I don't remember the last time I actually seen one of those scenes. Anyway, they finish doing that. They get dressed. And then Carly shows up. Bobby's sitting there talking to um, Nina. And Bobby's like, hey, you know... Carly understands and she respects your relationship and she's going to do her, you know, she's not going to interfere. And I'm just like, Bobby, I know that you're her mother and I know that you're supposed to say this stuff, but let's just be real. When was the last time that Carly ever actually respected anyone's relationship? When it comes towards Carly in the minute of her life, it's like, you know, Carly comes first. I remember there was a joke that they said on one of the commercials and Carly was like, you know, she got to have her men with her. And it was like Sonny and Jason and I think it was some other person. But, um, you know, this is how she is. So having Bobby say it's like, really? Like, seriously? And of course, Nina, it's like, yeah, I know, I respect her. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, Ugh, okay, Nina, you know. Given my grudge with this woman, I'll sit there and say, you are, um, gonna be sorely sorry that you have been saying any of that stuff. That you respect Carly for fighting for her. You're gonna be sorry for that. Um, meanwhile, Carly's outside, and Carly's like, she's just losing it. Um, she's like, oh, I try to, I try to, you know, switch the necklace, but it didn't work out, and everything just kind of backfired. And I'm just like, well, what'd you expect, Carly? What'd you expect? 
Hell, Jax was like, first Jax was like, you know, why are you just showing up over here? Talking about this necklace and stuff like that. Like, it's drawing attention. And I think Carly says something along the lines of, you know, because this is all happening too fast. So she says something. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she said something. And I was just like, wow, Carly. You know, that kind of came across as very self-centered. Like, the reason of why she just came over Jax's place. And Jax was like, listen, the more you try to fiddle with this necklace and try to get it back and you're doing all this back and forth BS, the more attention you're drawing. You need to stop. And of course, Jax was like, well, the next time you sit there and think about doing something like that, you should call me. <sighs> okay, Jax. Um, sure. Sure. This this totally makes sense. This is, this is not going to backfire on you at all. Solid plan, bro. Um, and the last scene that I, I want to talk about a little bit is because I, I almost want to sit there and say it's somewhat of a waste of time, but I'll just say it to this night anyway. We all know who I'm talking about. Chase, Willow, Sasha, and Michael. Christ almighty. Um, pretty much Michael and Willow are talking about, well, Willow's talking about moving out and getting her own place. Then she's all like, oh, well, I don't want to sit down and set Wiley's schedule, so we need to come up with a schedule, you know, for, for, for Wiley's sake. And they're doing this whole, well, this, this tiptoeing around BS. Like, ah, uh, It's so frustrating watching these characters try to neander their way around, trying to be like, oh, well, I want to be with Sasha, and now I want to be with Willow, and it's like... I want to be with Chase, but I also love Michael. It's like, Christ almighty. I get that it's a soap opera, but just pick a... Just pick a lane. Somebody, pick a lane and go in it. <sighs> anyway, that's pretty much what Michael and Willow was... Michael and Willow was talking about. It's not ups upsetting Wiley's schedule. And, um... Chase went over to Sasha... To make sure that she was still okay with the interview because Jackie can be tough and she's not just going to do a puff piece. It's going to be, you know, nitty gritty real. But Sasha says she can handle it. She goes over to Michael's place and, um, you know, she pretty much gives him the heads up. And of course, Michael's like, well, I support you. And, you know, he, he starts doing this whole, like romantic thing where he's like putting his hands on her and being like I support you and I don't want this to back for you which is actually very important um he doesn't want this interview to go sideways and make her want to use again um but other than that you know they they he tells her about their annulment but yet she's you know still going to be in Wally's life so that's just going to be whatever um you know, honestly, to tell you the truth, I say it's whatever because clearly they don't know how to keep their hands to themselves and it's just a mess in itself. And of course, um, Willow talks to Chase and she also tells him that they, you know, having their marriage annulled and then, you know, Chase is like, well, I know everything that's going on, but with that being said, I still want to be a part of your life and, you know, Willow's like, I hope that too, so. And also, you know, they, they give both of them a heads, well, she... Chase gives Willow a heads up on the whole, you know, story thing. Like, that she's going to be, you know, Sasha's going to be telling the story. She's going to try to keep you out of it. But, you know, honestly, to tell you the truth, Michael and Willow are both okay with it. Especially Michael. And it makes sense for Michael because, well, his, his name has been probably under scrutiny for a while since the fact that, you know, Sonny is his adoptive father and, you know... The whole Corinthos thing. So, I mean, he's used to that. But Willow, she's fine with it too. And it's not going to mess up their adoption. And yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty much about it with them. Um, let me double check. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, you know, honestly, to tell you the truth. You know, when I do these soap opera reviews and stuff like that. And I talk about everyone, even about characters I don't like or whatever. It's not like I don't like Willow, Sasha, Michael, and Chase. Because I think they are great characters. Um, I think this whole story is a mess. And the thing that... It's not so much that it's just a mess. 
it's the way that Willow and Michael are going about this whole thing. You know, this tiptoeing around, you know, both of them being cowards about how they feel about each other. They want to sit there and try to do the right thing for each other, but yet, you know, they're sacrificing their own happiness. And it's like they both don't really know what they want. So whenever I sit there and talk about them, I'm just like, Ugh, you know what, honestly, to tell you the truth, I wish I had a bottle of wine. Especially with them, because they're just... They're irritating. They're irritating because they don't know what they want. And the tiptoeing around is the part that just bothers me. And the fact that they're both cowards about their feelings, you know. It's one thing to be considerate and want the best for someone. But, you know, they've been lied to. Both of them have been lied to by, um... I forgot, um... Sasha and Chase. And now they're lying to each other. You know? You would think that they would both understand, hey, listen, I wish somebody would have been I wish somebody would have been honest with me about their feelings. And they're doing it to each other. So, yeah, this whole thing is just uh, you know, I have to tell you the truth. Maybe they'll figure it out. Um, hopefully they do. Because it's just um yeah. You know, I want to sit there, I partly want to sit there and apologize for the rant, but, like, I just, I can't do it because that's just generally how I feel. Um, and the thing is, I, I want to sit there and watch Brock TV's, um, review on some of this stuff. Only after. Like, if I do my review, then I'll watch it after because I don't want... Like, I want my thoughts to be my own and not just, like, clouded because of some what somebody else says. So, sometimes I'll sit there and be like, you know, I wonder what, I wonder what he thinks about it. Um, anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, it's getting out super late. Kind of a long day. Um, but tomorrow I'm off. So, hopefully, I can put it out a lot sooner. Anyway, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this whole Jackie thing and just everything in general. Um, one second. One, also, um, if somebody ever writes a comment and it's just magically gone, I didn't erase it. Sometimes YouTube just does that for reasons that just annoy me because I love reading the comment section. But, um... Alice, I think that's how you pronounce your name, Alice, um, <laughs> your comment was just epic, and I was just like, I, I read that a couple of times, and I was like, I so agree with everything, <laughs> I so agree with everything that you said, especially about the whole Cyrus just needs to shoot somebody, just to perk up stuff, hilarious, um, and J Carly ninety eight J Sam, um, I just love your comments in general. Um, Shakira and Damon, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. And anyone who doesn't watch, who doesn't read, um, who doesn't write comments, I thank you for watching in general. But I, I just, I had to sit there and just, you know, kind of shout you off for this comment because it was hilarious. So. Thank you for writing that, because I feel exactly the same way. Anyway, enough of my rant. Um, be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Have a good night at this point, and probably a good day when you're watching it tomorrow, hopefully.